Hey there! In today's video, I'm going to introduce you to what I call my box of doom. So, as part of my Me Made May pledge, I decided that I would take a good hard look at the box where I put all of my abandoned projects, the things that need mending or refashioning, and often I kind of just like throw things in there, toss it in, up in the attic, and I never see them again. So I was feeling some kind of way about these makes, especially in Me Made May when the whole point is to kind of reconnect with your Me Made wardrobe. Like, yes, there's the stuff that hangs in my closet that I actually wear, but there's a whole big box of things I am not wearing that are in various states. And yeah, so I thought I would take you along with me as I kind of refamiliarize myself with these old, well, not even old, these other makes um, and decide what to do with them. So in theory, I really love the whole make, do, and mend, um, use what you have, all those kinds of like sustainability mantras. But in practice, I've kind of been going really quickly through making new projects and when things don't work out or when things need attention, just kind of shoving it in here and it's out of sight, out of mind. So I'm wanting to kind of change that. So yeah, this is gonna be kind of like a weird unboxing video. <laughs> and um, where I have pictures of like the before garment, I'll try to pop them in, but I know I don't have that for everything. Um, and yeah, I may or may not do like the pattern line drawings like I usually do because there is a lot to get through. So let's jump in. These aren't in any particular order. So just pulling from the top, this first one is a recent make. I made this Ella hack back in March. So it's the, um, the forget me not Ella skirt but it's hacked to have an elastic back waist instead of a side zip or back zip. I think it's a back zip. Um, but I made it right before, I, well, I like got the flu and lost a bunch of weight and I thought I would just like gain it right back, but I didn't. So it's been a couple months now. And yeah, it's like three to four inches too big. It is like falling off of me, so I need to go through and unpick the four rows of top stitching I did on the elastic to bring that in. And I think I might even bring it around, like I think I have space to bring it around to like a third of the way. Kind of like, um, yeah, so I'll still have mostly a flat front, but then like the elastic will start here. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but I'm just gonna bring the elastic around further through the waistband. That's a better way of explaining it. Um, so that I get a tighter fit. I don't know if you hear my cat is like going bananas over there. Nora, what are you doing? Anyway, so that's the Ella skirt. I do wanna do this like fairly soon because I think even though it's black it has so many like fun bright colors that I think it's really cute for spring and summer. It's viscose. It has really like flushy fun movement and yeah I really enjoy wearing this one. Next in the box is let's see a sleeve, a waist tie, another what is this? No, this is just, this is just a strip. Okay. Um, these are the pieces to the Alborg dress that I made in, I think, 2019. It's um, a really cute wrap dress from How To Do Fashion. But I did not do a full bust adjustment. I just went by the size of my full bust. 
and it ended up being really, really big, like around here. So like, yes, it fit across my bust, it fit my waist, cause it's uh, a wrap dress, it's adjustable, but it was so baggy in the shoulders that I just like never felt good in it. So I had the idea to take it apart and make something new, but evidently this is as far as I got. So this looks like the skirt piece which is definitely big enough to make into another dress because it's got these panels. It's all French seamed, but I think I had an accident with the seam ripper here. So, but again, it was a pretty long skirt. So I still have a lot of room to play with. And then, so that's the skirt piece. Goodness me. Sorry, that's so distracting to me. I hope that's not. <laughs> I don't know how much of it is actually coming through. Okay, I think she just took herself upstairs. Darn cat. Um, then I have like a meter and a half of leftover fabric, but I think it's not the full width. So my thought was I could try to make something with princess seams so that I can use the leftover fabric. Um, I can kind of piece things around a little bit um, with the skirt. I'm thinking I'll probably do a Tamsin because like I even already have little waist ties made. So that would be really cute. But yeah, I couldn't let go of this fabric. It's so, so silky. It's a viscose, but it is like lighter and finer than any viscose that I have felt or worked with. It is a pain to work with. <laughs> um, definitely use like a Microtex needle, starched everything. Um, but yeah, like it, my machine was really like trying to eat it up because it is so, so fine. But that also means like it's really silky. Like I keep just putting it on my face like a weirdo. Sorry. Um, but yeah, this will be made up into a dress hopefully like summer because it has a really light fat it's more like fall tones but the fabric is so like lightweight like almost it's not sheer but like it's not opaque either um so i'm thinking probably more for summer than for fall but yeah so pretty next we have another deconstructed situation uh from 2019 um, so I had made, this used to be, yep, so we've even got like the button placket still. Uh, this used to be a Justine skirt from Ready to Sew. Oh, yeah, we're falling apart here. Um, yeah, and I was just, I was not wearing it. Um, even right after I made it, it's in this really beautiful, Lady McElroy uh, linen is super nice. It's really nice to work with. It's like a little bit bouncy, uh, which I struggled with. <laughs> well, I didn't struggle with cutting these because they're just rectangles. Um, I had made a little like cord set where I used the uh, Pattern Scout Hannah tank and then uh, the Justine skirt was really cute with it. Um, and I wore the Hannah tank all the time. Um, I, find, I finally gave it to my mom because it's too small for me. Um, but I was not reaching for the skirt like at all. And I finally realized this and like, I think you'll probably see it echoed in some other <laughs> things in here that I just really don't like skirts that are gathered rectangles on my body, especially when they're like midi length. Um, I really like something with like a little bit more, either something that is like flowier or has a bit more um, shape to it. Cause yeah, it was just like, I don't know, like bulky and flat. Um, didn't like it, but I have quite a bit, like, let's see. So I have two, two of these panels and then two of 
these. So I'm not sure. Oh, and then I have all this. So <laughs> this was the waistband. Here's some other, they do like look pretty different because uh, this one was washed a lot and then this is the, yeah, off cuts of the actual fabric. Um, this was cut on the bias, so I'm not sure how much is there, but in any case, I think I have enough to get at least a tank top out of, so maybe like, <laughs> I might honestly just make another Hannah tank because I loved that and I wore it so, so much. I was really, really sad when I sized out of it. So maybe I'll just make another one. Um, but another option would be like the Reynolds top from Helen's Closet. Um, yeah, I think that's probably like the direction I'm gonna go. Maybe I could eke out like something short sleeved. Um, but probably, but there's probably not there enough there. I would, I'd really love to have a pair of like Pietra shorts in this cute stripe. That would be super fun. But I don't think I have enough. Maybe I could piece it together. I might be able to like do some secret seams like in among the stripes. So I'll have to play with that. Definitely a summer fabric. So we'll see if I can pencil this one in sooner than later. If you watched my summer dress review, um, my last video, you'll recognize uh, these next two. So this one is a Heidi dress that I made a couple years ago and I need to replace the straps. So this one is like coming out and coming apart. Um, but neither one are interface. I don't know why I didn't interface them. Um, it definitely needs it. Um, Cause yeah, there is a lot of, yeah, there can be a lot of strain. Like this one popped, I like, I think I laid down like on my side and yeah, I just like, Hurp. so I need to do that. I have like little, this is why I don't throw away my scraps. Um, so I have like a little bit left over to fix that. And then the other thing I'm going to do is on the back side, take out, I might just take out the pleats entirely and leave it like a more like loosey goosey shape, but I'm definitely taking out the waist ties because I, yeah, haven't really liked the way that they've looked. I feel like it's too much happening and, um, I prefer it either just without or with like a simple like leather skinny belt. So that's the plan for this one. Um, it's so nice to wear in the summer. Ooh, there's like, oh no, I have a big snag. Ooh, I'll have to address that also. Um, but yeah, it's like a really, really soft washed linen. I got it from Joann's a few years ago and yeah, I mean, the qual it's not super consistent. It's definitely like slubby, um, which is not necessarily bad, but it feels really good. So I love that and I'm excited to wear it again soon. I loved the idea of this dress, but it just like didn't really work out in reality. So yeah, in the other video I, t I showed how the waist seam is super, super wonky. So it has these like V darts um, at the center. And I think in this viscose, which is not a good quality viscose at all, um, but I still like really love it because it's so cute and yellow, and fun. Um, yeah, it's like everything that I love about summer. So I really want for it to work. But yeah, so I think the weight of the gathered skirt is what is pulling and making the waist seam uneven. I also, it's another <laughs> gathered rectangle in a midi length, which I now know to never ever make again because it is a pattern <laughs> that I do not like. Um, or like making them and not liking them has been a pattern that I'm going to end. That's what I meant. 
But yeah, um, so I'm going to remove the skirt and try to cut it, well for one, like try to level the waist of the bodice. Um, Cause if it's been like stretched from the weight of the skirt, uh, that will need to be leveled. But if it is just like the weight of all that fabric pulling on it, then that should be alleviated. And then I can cut like a nice A-line skirt or maybe a paneled skirt, something that is going to be a little like flowier and looser, not so much bulk at the waist and like have a bit more shape to it instead of just dropping straight down. Um, I should say this is a hack of the sand deep dress from By Hand London. I loved the bodice and I think the effect of adding the elastic to the shoulders, which were way too big for me. So the, <laughs> the elastic really helped with that. Um, but I think it's super cute and I love the way that the sleeves turned out, adding elastic here. It's such a fun summer cool dress. Um, but yeah, I'm just not sure if the fabric is gonna be able to take all of the adjustments that I wanna make to it. Next, I have two of the same top that have the same problem. I'm really happy that I like got it figured out. So this is the Forget Me Not Vera T, which is a free pattern. It is like my favorite t-shirt pattern. I really like the fit along the body and I love the sleeves. So they've got, they gather up into this nice little cuff, which makes it feel like a little more blousey, a little more elevated. Um, so I have this one in this like seafoam green, dark mint, uh, dusty teal. I'm not sure how you want to call this color, but I have this one and then I have this cute plum purple. Both of these are made in a bamboo cotton jersey mix and this fabric is really great. So even though both of these tops are ill-fitting, I think that it is worth it to take them apart and fix it um, because the fabric like will last a long time. Um, I have a few other tops made in this uh, same fabric and they wash and wear just like so nicely. So both of them are, for a long time I thought I just made the wrong size, um, but they're really big in the shoulder. So there's like a lot of bunching up in here. It doesn't sit quite on the shoulder. And then you can see like the neck band is really wavy. So I finally figured out that that means that my neckband needs to be shorter. So that's a pretty easy fix. Um, I just need to <laughs> unpick all the top stitching, which, you know, is my favorite task. Um, especially zigzags, like I feel like it's, it's worse. I don't know. So I will do that, shorten the neckband, but then I also need to shorten this area here. So a little bit on this side, but then grading down for a like and it'll kind of be a quick and dirty, it's not gonna be quick, but um, it's an unofficial way to do a sloping shoulder adjustment, which I definitely need, because I always get like this little, especially in Jersey, um, little excess here, um, as even when like I do, it's not from a needing a full bust adjustment, I have finally figured out, thanks to Cashmerette. Um, both ahead of the curve and using their patterns that are, yeah, made for my best size. So anyway, that's what I need to do with these ones. So it means taking off the sleeves, taking off the neckband, and then, um, yeah, making that, grading, grading that to zero here. Um, but it'll be great because I love these tops a lot. They're, again, like comfy as a t-shirt, but kind of function a bit more like a blouse because they have that cute sleeve. So I really like these and hope to get them back in my wardrobe soon. This is a case of the fabric and the pattern like not really matching up style-wise. So I have this really fun 
cockatoo print. Uh, it has this like nice gold background. I think it is super, super cute. And I made just like a very simple elasticated circle skirt. It's a really, it's super, super fine cotton lawn. So I even lined it. The lining is not my best work. I will be honest there. <laughs> I think I was really tired of hemming circle skirt by the time I was doing the lining. So it's, it's not my best, but the problem that I have with this is that I really love that the fabric was really like fun and funky, but then I paired it with kind of a, like a very prim shape. So because it's a, it's a full circle skirt or maybe it's a half circle skirt, but it hits like below my knee. So it feels just a little too, yeah, a little too prim. I'm thinking that if I just shorten the skirt and make it like above the knee, that that'll make it feel a little more flirty and a little bit more like congruent with the vibe of the print. And really like the vibe that I am wanting to bring into my wardrobe anyway, that it's gonna be like a little more relaxed and a little more fun. So that's my plan there. Um, yeah, hemming the cotton was fine, but hemming the lining was pretty tricky. And I think this time I will just use a rolled hem um, or, or just a surged um, edge from my overlocker. Um, I'll have to play around and see. So I haven't actually done that yet on my new overlocker. I tried it a couple times on my old one and it did not work out, but it was also like a very crappy machine. So I'll have a little play around, but I think shortening this skirt is gonna make it, um, yeah, a little bit more me. I have to laugh at myself a little bit for this one. Um, I'm a little embarrassed to, to show you all. Um, I'm gonna say that my excuse is that I was away from my sewing machine for several weeks. And then the first project I did um, when I came back from America um, in September was this skirt and I made it like, while I was super jet lagged, it was like three in the morning. And um, this is the result. <laughs> this is my, my top stitching is probably the, I'm not gonna say the worst I've ever done because there's a, I, I guess there's like a difference between learning something new and being in a jet lagged haze and just running things through the machine like um, a dazed person. And I think that's, that's what happened here. Um, and it's, yeah, like, I already complained about unpicking top stitching and specifically with elastic. And this is gonna be even worse because it's a uh, double gauze. So it's really fine, but like, it's kind of like fluffy and has a lot of volume. So I think I'm not going to unpick it at all. I think actually what I'm gonna do is just chop it off and maybe start over. In fact, I don't even know if it's gonna stay a skirt. Um, I have some extra, so I mean, I have like this much fabric um, from the skirt, but I also have a little bit like left over. And the fabric itself is really nice. Like I said, it's a double gauze. It has this really cute like gold fleck. I don't know if it's catching the light or not. Um, and yeah, I made it at the end of the summer Initially, it was going to be the Tempo Sundress from Love Notions. But yeah, it was September and I was like, I'm not gonna get to wear this, so I'll just make it a maxi skirt. And that's something that I could like wear until it gets cold. But I didn't wear it pretty much at all. So now I'm kind of wondering if maybe it should become a blouse, perhaps. Um, yeah, so I need to have a bit of a think on this one. 
but either either way the wavy dodgy top stitching has got to go alrighty we're about halfway this next one is an abandoned project so we have a waistband uh, some offcut new yardage and then the skirt so this is the Dulce Pinafore from Jennifer Lauren Handmade. I started making this and I, well, I'm, I almost finished it. I attached the skirt, which I just wanna show you the cool pockets. They're like squared. I think they're really nice and they're big. Um, she does really great pockets. But yeah, so I attached like the bodice, the waistband, and the skirt all together and discovered that the bust point was like up here on me. So I scrapped that bodice and I ordered new fabric to make a new bodice. And that was as far as I got. So I definitely want to revisit this probably in the fall because the Dulce Pinafore is on my make nine for this year. I have a really cute um, cotton twill. Um, gosh, is it is it a twill or is it a sateen? Like it has a really shiny finish. Um, it's really, really nice. But yeah, it's on my make nine um, to do and have like this really pretty like pumpkin colored pinafore. I think will be so, so cute but I need to finish my toile. Next is a pattern that I made last fall and I really liked it, but it, ne it needs some attention. So where are we? This is the Soho 7 toaster sweater. Um, I tested it when they released their, or when they were testing their curvy version and I, Love the fit across the high bust. Um, for raglan sleeves are really tricky for me because my, like this distance is really short and then my high bust is, yeah, significantly smaller than my full bust. And they totally took that into account when they drafted it for the curvy sizing. Um, they really nailed like that high bust fit. So it's really great. However, <laughs> Um, it is, I need to grade down in the like hip waist area because it is cropped and because it's too big for me, I'm really cold <laughs> whenever I wear this, there's like a major updraft. So I need it to sit closer to my body there. But the bigger issue is that I made this, I think it was one of the last things I made on my old overlocker before it like really kick the bucket and the seams are just all pulling apart really badly. The tension is really off. So in addition to like grading the side seams, what I really need to do is just like take the whole thing apart and put it back together <laughs> with better tension. But yeah, this is in a light French Terry. A really pretty green that I wore all the time but yeah it was always like a little suboptimal because I could see um, like my not quite matching thread pulling through and then yeah again like being really cold so I'm excited to get that fixed and into my fall and winter wardrobe this next one is a new addition to the pile. I mean, it's like in the middle of the box, but that's just cause I like stuffed everything in the box, but it was, this was hanging in my closet since I made it last year and I have only reached for it a handful of times. So finally I had a like, I don't know, a moment with this Tamsin dress because I love it so much. It is, like this print is, if you could like 
put me into a print, it would probably be this print. Um, excuse me. I love the like peachy tones with like the colors are so pretty. It's got peach and red, even like turquoise and of course olive green. It's so, so pretty. I love the shape and style of the Tamsin, but I was not, every time I'd reach for this, I'd put it on and like, I just didn't feel good in it. And so I really just like need to take it apart and resize it because it's too big. I'm not sure if the si if I got the sizing wrong, because I do have a couple of Tamsins that do fit me well, but this, <laughs> this is not one of them. So I'm not sure if it was one that I made before I had this, like got the sizing, before I got the like dialed in the fit, or if it's because the viscose twill like grew and stretched and warped. But yeah, it's like falling off my shoulders. It's like really big, like under the boob. So I feel very like, I don't know. It's not, it's not my best look. And it's really a shame because the fabric is so pretty and the shape and the whole like idea that I have of myself wearing this dress is not happening, so I need to get this fixed. So some of the things in here are like long deconstruction processes, like with the Tamsin dress, I'm gonna have to take the whole thing apart, resize it, put it back together. And then there are other things, like this March top that will take me maybe 15 minutes to do, but I just haven't done it. <laughs> So I started fixing this and then didn't finish. So my problem with it was the cuff was like getting caught. So it's a bias bound cuff and it came to about here, like similar to this one. And I'd bend my arm and it would like get caught here or it would get caught on the other side of my elbow and it drove me up the wall. So I cut it off with the intention of hemming this and putting elastic through, similar to this. I cut it off, I even surged the edge, but I never got around to doing the hem and putting the elastic in. It's a super quick job. Like, why have I not just done it? Um, so that's a really silly one. Again, this is the March top from Helen's Closet and it's made in this really like soft, cozy brushed cotton. So it's definitely too warm for this time of year, but I will hopefully have this fixed and be reaching for it again come the fall. So here we have another hopefully quick fix. This is the Cashmere at Pembroke dress that I made January last year. And I love it so much. I wear it all the time, but I need to, the easy part is going to be top stitching this steam allowance down because it rolls up all the time. And I just feel like it makes it look really messy. Like it's not sitting right on the neckline. Um, yeah, it's kind of the difference between handmade and homemade. I don't know if I like like that terminology, but I'm using it for now because um, I really don't like the way this neckband sits. It just needs a little top stitching. So that's very easy. That'll be a super quick fix, but the not the maybe not quick fix. Maybe it'll be easy. I don't know. I have never had to repair ripped jersey before. So this is where the side slit comes together at the um, side seam and I ripped it. It got caught in my bike. Um, I was like trying not to flash anyone. So I have a special bike, I should say. Um, I have a like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to call it. It's, I have a three wheel bike. Um, it's a special accommodation for my disability. Um, and instead of like pedaling like this, I like sit back here and I pedal like this. So without 
when I, if I wear a dress, I really need to wear shorts under it because there is just no way of keeping the dress down. It like just comes all the way up. And I forgot to wear bike shorts a couple weeks ago. So I was thinking I could like sort of tie it around me <laughs> to like keep my modesty on my trip to the doctor. And it didn't work. And I ripped the jersey here. So I could just, probably the easiest thing would be to just take the whole side seam in a little bit so that that, so that that rip is then on the inside of the seam allowance. I could just trim it out. And I do have some room, like it's not super tight on me. So I could do that, but I kind of want to see if there is a easier way, maybe just like bonding it together. I don't know. I haven't decided how okay with <laughs> visible mending I am. And that's really like the choice I have to make with this one. I have another half deconstructed project here. Oops, so we have scrap of material. Uh, okay, this is the dress. So I made this like February or March, I think, of 2019. So it's a an older one. And this was, was the Sew Over It Eve dress. And while I really loved it at the time, even then I was like having problems with the sleeve, which I now know from other folks that so over its drafting is generally like pretty narrow in the back and like very, they have really high sleeve heads, which definitely does not work for my like rounded back. And um, yeah, as I need a lot more, yeah, fabric there. So that was good to learn after. Um, if I ever revisit the pattern, which they have like extended the sizing as well. If I ever revisit the pattern, that's something I can look for. But so when I made it, I took pictures, it was cute, but it wasn't really a very functional dress. So I thought I would take the sleeves off and then use the remaining fabric that I had to cut the like flutter sleeve version. Well, that did not happen. And it's now several years later and I am not the same size. So there's, there's no hope of doing a dress with this fabric anymore, but I do think that I can recut a new waistband and new waist ties and have a nice little wrap skirt. Cause I think the fabric is really cute. It's this like monochrome, um, like abstract floral with the black and the tan, I think is really cute. So yeah, I think that'll be fun to have a little, so I think it's like a half circle skirt is what the Eve is based on. So it'll be like really swishy and fun. It'll go with lots of things. It's definitely something I could wear like all season or like all year round too. So that is a good option. Um, yeah. So someday I will actually, actually get to this. Here's another one that sat in my closet for a long time and I couldn't really figure out why I wasn't wearing it. So, so it's again, like one that I really loved initially. This is the Wilder gown from Friday Pattern Company and I hacked it to have this like really fun balloon sleeve. So I cut the regular like raglan short sleeve and then I added these gathered rectangles to it um, and then elasticated the sleeve. It is super cute. And then I also did a full bust adjustment according to the pattern instructions. There's no like darts or anything. You literally just slash down the length of it, open it up, slash the width and lengthen. But I lengthened it too far. Um, it, it fits great like across here, but the waist is now like 
below my hips and it's not the look I wanted. <laughs> um, and so for a long time, I just let it sit. I think I finally decided I'm gonna try to track down the fabric. I'm hoping that Minerva still has some in stock. And I think, so it's like, it was meant to be knee length, but it's a little bit shorter than knee length. And then I would need to take, um, you know, three to four inches off of the waist. So at that point, it would not be a dress anymore. It would be like a, a tunic. Um, so I really like need more fabric and I don't have any left. So it just, but like it never occurred to me to just like buy more. Like, like I could, I could just do that. I think they still have some in stock. I, I think I saw it there like a couple months ago. So fingers crossed for me that I can just get more and then have this fixed. This one is not a garment I made for me, but something I made for my partner. This is thread. Okay, get off. Um, this is the Bobbin and Buttons Dean sweater. And it just like never really worked. I could not get the raglan sleeves to sit nicely on him. It was like there was a lot of twisting. I think it's not, there wasn't enough length in the like shoulder to underarm height because it was like, yeah, it was like very twisted. Not great. And <laughs> he very lovingly said like, can I give this back to you? Because I don't want to wear it. And I was like, that's very fair. Yeah, I understand. I don't think you should wear it either. But the French Terry is really nice. Um, it's like super stretchy, really like squishy. And I think the color is, it's not my first choice for colors that I would wear, but I think it's nice. It's like, I consider blue to be pretty neutral. So I'm gonna try to make something for myself out of this. I think I could, I could definitely get a, um, what's the one I just did? The toaster sweater um, from Soho House 7. I could definitely squeeze one of those out of here because it's relatively the same shape, just smaller. And yeah, I think that'll be really nice. But again, it's just been like in this box. I had this idea ages ago, but it's just been like languishing away in the box. Totally forgot about it when like, this could make me a nice little sweater. We have another wrap dress, again from 2019. This one, the simplicity one, I don't remember the number for it, but had cute little princess seams, a little gathered cuff, and yeah, I made it in this little fox print that I still love. Um, it feels, I got this from the market um, in Utrecht. It feels very synthetic, but yeah, I still really, I still really like it. It was very swishy and it didn't do any like static electricity. It didn't like stick to my legs or stick to my tights. So again, my plan is to make a skirt um, this one. The fit is like much closer. Um, the Eve, I had like a lot of room still, and I think it can still be like a functional wrap skirt. This one does not wrap all the way around me anymore, <laughs> um, but I still think I have enough to salvage a skirt out of it. So that was a lot. This, like, a really big IKEA tote of projects that I have really been like out of sight, out of mind for quite a while. And I've been really inspired with Me Made May to kind of put these back in the light. Um, so just by like 
pulling them all out, like feeling them, talking about them has made me definitely more motivated to take on some of these projects. And I've even formed for myself like a little plan as to how I can integrate them into my making practice. So I've decided to put the box somewhere that I will actually see it for one. <laughs> and that's gonna be upstairs um, near my rack. So when I do like my little make videos, I have the, the little rack, the bamboo rack with my clothes on it. And cause I'm in the habit of when like something comes off my machine, I go up there, I hang it up so that it's there for me to like take photos of, um, to do the video, to document in whatever way I'm going to do that. Um, you know, before it like gets lost in the laundry or like I spill something on it. So like I have that habit already. So I think I'm gonna put the box right there and basically do like a little trade. So when I go upstairs with my new garment and I hang it on the rack, I will also pick up like an old project to bring down here. And I'm hoping, I might not do like every other thing and I'm not gonna set myself a goal to like empty the box by the end of the year, though that would be great. I wanna be like a little bit more realistic with myself, but I think just having it there and integrated into a habit that I already have is gonna make me much more likely to wanna tackle some of these projects. So I have to say that when I set the goal or like when I did my pledge for Me Made May to look in this box and like get familiar with these projects again, I was a bit intimidated and like I didn't really want to do it because it's so much easier to just set it aside and not think about it and just make nice like new things, which for me is so much easier than I don't really enjoy doing alterations and upcycling takes like uses like a different part of my brain. And I find that like a bit more difficult than just starting with a fresh piece of fabric. So I was like a little bit nervous about even like looking in this box because I've just kept it so like tucked away for so long but I'm actually really glad that I did and it's not as overwhelming as I thought it would be especially since I have a plan of like how I can move through it at a more like reasonable pace and it feels good to slow up my like other making, I think. <laughs> we'll see how it goes, like, yeah, from theory to practice, but I'll let you know. But yeah, so that was like one side of my goal for, or my pledge for Me Made May. And the other side was tracking what I am wearing every day. I feel like I'm already pretty mindful of my wardrobe needs partially because of like my sensitivity and um, disability and like living with chronic pain. Like I do have, like <laughs> what I wear impacts me a lot. So I am paying a lot of attention to that, but I haven't done like an actual, like documenting what I am wearing in a day. And I think that I'm really curious to see at the end of the month where that kind of shakes out. Um, Cause yeah, I used to really, well, I'll get into it more. Um, I'm gonna do like a whole other video on my observations when the month is over, but I'm really curious to see, to look at what I've actually worn, how I've put outfits together. I used to be like dresses only and recently have gotten really into separates. So I think there'll be some interesting um, conclusions to draw from that, uh, from, from the data, the data being like my handwritten <laughs> journal of what I am wearing. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm planning to do a video on that for next week. So stay tuned and yeah, that's all for me for today. Um, until next time, happy making.
Bye.